Today we'll be ranking the albums by Nightwish. I will be including the new album, Yester Wind, as well as the rest of the studio albums. I will be using a new format for this ranking, which will be like a combination ranking video or tier list. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm going to be going in chronological order and then I'll place the album on this ranking chart and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So let's get into this. First album I want to talk about is Angels Fall First. This is their debut album. It was released on November 1st, 1997 through Spine Farm Records. This album shows the band when they were just starting out. Many of the members do not like this album. They said that uh, they consider it to be an extended demo. So the production on this album uh, brings it down a bit. The album has Tarja Turunen on vocals and Tumas Holopainen does the male vocals on a few of the tracks. This was also the only album where he uh, provides vocals. This album uh, also has some standout tracks like Beauty and the Beast, which features some big guitar chords as well as some heavy riffs. There's also a track called The Carpenter, which is a slow plodding track, but also shows off their softer side and has both the male and female vocals. I like this song because it's one of the catchier ones. Then there's a title track, which is one of the ballads on the album, and this shows off Tarch has uh, operatic vocal singing. But overall, despite the production, it's not a bad album. It has a raw production, a different style, but it's not their worst. So it's going to go at number eight. The next album I want to talk about is Ocean Born. This is their second studio album. It was released on December 7th, 1998 through Spine Farm. This is their first album with bass player Sami Vanska. This album shows the band changing their sound after releasing their debut album. Their first album was more of like folk metal, but this one is heavier, maybe one of their heaviest albums. And it goes into more of a power metal sound. The songs have faster tempos, there's more double bass drumming. And this is the only album that features the harsh, almost death growls and... I believe they were by uh, Tapio Wilska, and he is also the vocalist of Fintroll. If I'm wrong, you may correct me. And then he does vocals on tracks uh, Devil in the Deep Dark Ocean and The Pharaoh Sales to Orion. The album features flute, violin, and cello players, and the opening track Stargazers has some faster rhythms and melodic guitar riffs. The aforementioned Devil in the Deep Dark Ocean is one of the heavier songs, and one of the few Nightwish songs that has some harsh male vocals that are contrasted with the softer, more operatic female vocals. Then there's a song called Sacrament of Wilderness, which has a mostly power metal sound, but also some heavy guitar riffs. And then one of my favorite ballads by the band called Walking on Air. It's one of the catchiest Nightwish songs that they have ever recorded. Overall, this is a strong album in their discography. It also has a unique sound, so it might be one of their most overlooked albums. It's very good. And I have it at number five. Next album I want to talk about is Wishmaster. This is the third album. It was released on May 8th, 2000 through Spine Farm. This is the album where they more or less defined their symphonic metal sound. I would consider it a good starting point for newcomers to the band. It's just a well-rounded and solid album. This one has Tarja on vocals and some additional musicians who provide spoken word sections such as tenor, baritone, and bass vocals, and there's flute and choir arrangements. It's a more accessible album. At the same time, they explore some darker themes, such as the Columbine High School Massacre, which is talked about in the lyrics of the song The Kinslayer. Then some of the other tracks are more fantasy-oriented. The album has a track She Is My Sin, which takes a more traditional heavy metal approach with a guitar playing. Then the aforementioned Kinslayer, which is a good example of their signature symphonic metal sound. Same can be said for the track Wanderlust, which has some fast-paced drums, lots of fantasy-inspired lyrics. One of the standout tracks is Dead Boy's Poem, a very soft and emotional ballad. Overall, a very well-rounded album, very representative of the band's classic sound. And this one is going to be at number four. The next album I want to talk about is Century Child. This is their fourth studio album. It was released on May 25th, 2002 through Spineform and a few other labels in other countries. This is the first album with Marco Hiatela. He's the bass player and vocalist, if you didn't know. He was in the band for a long time, but he left 
in January of 2021. The album is also notable for being the first Nightwish album to have an orchestra. And it's another solid album. I think it's very representative of their symphonic metal sound. And the inclusion of Marco really takes this album up a notch. The song has uh, lots of really good bass guitar playing by Marco. And he provides lead vocals on many of the tracks. It also has the cover of Phantom of the Opera. Which is one of those songs that's very popular with reaction videos. So you may have seen... Or you may have seen the live version, and I've always liked this cover. It's actually one of my uh, favorite songs by the band, but the rest of the album is still solid. The album has the opening track, Bless the Child, which is a song very representative of their sound. Then the track, Dead to the World, the first song where you can hear Marco's vocals. Then the power ballad, Ever Dream, featuring the softer vocals of Tarta. And then Slaying the Dreamer, which shows off the heavier side. The only song I don't like too much is The Ballad Forever Yours. Overall, really good album. It has a little bit of everything. It has the heavier songs, the symphonic songs, the ballads, and the cover of Phantom of the Opera. So a very well-rounded album. One of my favorites. It's going to go in number three. Next is Once, their fifth album released on June 7, 2004, through Spine Farm, Nuclear Blast, and Roadrunner. This is the last album with Tarja on vocals. It's a very popular album when it came out, mostly in Europe. I don't remember when it came out, although it is the first uh, Nightwish album to chart in the United States. This was also the most expensive album I recorded in Finland. Until the next one, which I'll get to, it's another album that has their signature sound. But one thing I like about this album is that they're not afraid to get really heavy on some of the songs. Uh, lots of songs have these big heavy metals on guitar riffs. And they still have this symphonic sound. The album opens with Dark Chest of Wonders. It's a fun, up-tempo rocker. Then they continue with the single, Nemo. A big, epic, catchy song. And then Wish I Had an Angel. Another one with those big, sing along choruses. And the heavy riffs as well. And then Planet Hell. Another standout with big guitar riffs. And the two songs I mentioned also have Marco Hiatella on lead vocals with Tarja. And then there's Ghost Love Score. A long, epic track, and that's influenced by the progressive rock bands of the 70s. And another favorite of the Reaction channels. I recommend checking out some of the live versions of this as well. They're probably better in the studio version. There's some, like, folkier stuff here. There's a ballad called uh, Kualema Tiki Taitijin. I'm not sure how to pronounce that correctly, but supposedly it means death makes an artist in Finnish. And another highlight is a Native American-themed song, Creek Memory Blood, and that features a Native American activist and musician, John Two Hawks, on guest vocals and flute. Overall, one of the best albums. Another good album to start with if you have never listened to this band because it has a little bit of everything. But it's not number one. It's going number two. I think because after Ghost Love Score, I feel they should have ended the album. They have like two more tracks after this, and... They kind of seem like unnecessary. So I think for that reason, it's going to stay out of the number one spot. It was almost number one, but have it at number two. Moving on, we have Dark Passion Play. This is their sixth album, uh, released on September 26, 2007, through Spine Farm Nuclear Blast and Roadrunner. And it's the first album with Annette Olsen on vocals. Uh, supposedly, uh, Tarja was fired from the band. I'm not sure why. And um, Annette is on this album, and the next one, she, she only recorded two albums with the band. And this one has Troy Dinocoli, but he's uh, listed as a guest musician, and he plays various wind instruments. Uh, I'll be talking about Troy later. He becomes a full member in a, on a later album. But Marco Hiatella provides male vocals on many tracks. And the album was very successful. It's listed in the top 40 best-selling albums of all time in Finland. It's one of those albums that got mixed reviews, but for me, I really like this. I like the dark and gothic nature of it. It has some of the best songwriting. I like the, that it has lots of variety on it and um, lots of good songs. So the album opens with the 14-minute track called The Poet and the Pendulum. Very epic and filled with many symphonic elements. Then there's some folk metal songs like Last of the Wilds. Uh, they get pretty heavy on some stuff like Master Passion Greed. And one of my favorite ballads of all time, Meadow of Heaven, or Meadows of Heaven. 
Then there are songs that are very catchy and more radio friendly, such as Amaranth, and then some darker and gothic stuff like Cadence of Her Last Breath, and then Sahara with uh, kind of some more like world, like almost Middle Eastern vibes. But overall, this might be controversial that I'm doing this, but this is my favorite album. And I'm putting this in uh, number one. So let's move on. The next album I want to talk about is Imaginarium. This is the seventh album. It was released on November 30th, 2011 uh, through C Nation Oi and Sony Music, Nuclear Blast, and Roadrunner. It's a concept album about an old composer who was reminiscing of his youth on his deathbed. There was a movie of the same name released. I've actually never seen it. I don't even know if it was released like in the Americas or not. But it's their second and last album with vocalist Annette Olsen. And the last with drummer uh, Juka Nevalainen. And the album features a live orchestra. And bass player Marco Chiatela said that this album was... Uh, one of like their heaviest albums. So. And Tumis cited three influences for this album, which were Tim Burton, Neil Gaiman, and Salvador Dali. Now, in my opinion, it reminds me a lot of a Tim Burton type of movie soundtrack. It gives me lots of like Beetlejuice or Nightmare Before Christmas vibes. I like this album, although it kind of drags at times. Sometimes I feel it's long. There's an epic song, like 13 minutes long, called Song of Myself, which was inspired by Walt Whitman. There's some heavy stuff here as well. So, for example, track number nine, which is called Rest Calm, was inspired by the band Paradise Lost. There are some ballads, such as The Crow, The Owl, and The Dove. There's a song, Last Rider of the Day, inspired by being on a roller coaster. And then the jazzy Slow Love Slow, which features the sultry vocals of Annette Olsen. There's also the main single called Story Time, which is just a typical Nightwish type of metal song. And this one, I struggled with the ranking because I'm putting it at number seven, but I wanted it to be higher because I like it a lot, but it's one of those albums that the other ones are just like a little better. I want this to be higher, but it's at number seven. Next is Endless Forms, Most Beautiful, released on March 25th, 2015. This is their eighth studio album. And the first with uh, singer Flora Jensen, and the first with Troy Donakely as a full-time member. And this album focuses on like evolutionary theories of Charles Darwin and Richard Dawkins. It's kind of different type of album for them. They did, they did like a lot of fantasy stuff before, but this one is more science-based. And has some uh, really good songs. Shudder Before the Beautiful, that opens with a quote by Richard Dawkins. There's Weak Fantasy, primarily written by Marco Hiatella and... Uh, Probably the album's heaviest song. And then we have a song, Elan, about the meaning of life. A ballad called Are the Cades and the Sun about uh, the band members' parents, and which was a very emotional track for them. And then a Celtic-inspired song called My Walden, which is inspired by the book uh, Walden by Henry David Thoreau. And the title track inspired by the Richard Dawson's book, uh, The Ancestor's Tale. Then there's a 25-minute song, the greatest show on earth and i think this one is actually one of the better epics like despite like the long length of the song i i think it's actually pretty good it's like lots of orchestration but this album has a slight problem and then the songs are not very memorable i think a lot of songs sound similar so on the one hand it's very representative of the sound floor jansen sounds good but on the other hand it can get a little boring so unfortunately Something has to go at the bottom, and this might be controversial, but I'm putting this at number 10, all the way at the bottom. Next is Human to Nature, released on April 10th, 2020. This is a double album. The first disc is a typical Nightwish album, and the second disc is all instrumental. I'll be honest with you, I never listened to the second disc, but the first disc has some good stuff on it. This is the second album with Floor Jensen on lead vocals. The last album with Marco Chiatella, before he quit the band. He's actually not even on this that much as far as vocals are concerned. But the opening track, uh, Music, it's about the history of music. Then Noise is about modern society. Shoemaker is about an American geologist, Eugene Shoemaker. The song Harvest is about the meaning of life in general. This one features lead vocals by Troy. And the song Pan would describe an ode to human imagination. How's the Heart is about human empathy, altruism, 
and True Love and the song Procession was inspired by the Netflix series Stranger Things. Then Endlessness is about like this force of life or something like that. And this is like the only song with Marco on lead vocals. And I thought this was going to be ranked at the bottom, but this one has actually grown on me over time. I think the first side is strong enough for it to not be at the bottom. So I like some of the songs. Like, for example, Noise has a lot of good, good stuff on it. Track 3 Shoemaker has some cool backing vocals by Troy. Harvest is a cool, like, tribal, almost world music type of song. And has the new drummer, whose name is uh, Kai Hanto, and he plays some, like, tribal drums. And uh, it's good. It's a little soft, a little atmospheric. And then the second CD is kind of like something I never listened to, but it's uh, not too bad. But I like uh, some of the tracks on the first side, so for that reason, it's going in number nine. Uh, I almost put it at ten, but going in number nine. And the last album is Yester Wind. So for those of you who don't know, I mean, you know already, you can see the screen, so this is coming at number six. So in my initial review, I said it's the best of the Floor albums, and I stand by that. Also the best since Dark Passion Play, and as per my ranking, that still holds true. So it's a strong album. I'm not really going to talk about it too much, because I already did a full review of it, but I uh, basically like a lot of it. I think uh, it's kind of a almost like a softer, more atmospheric album, but the songwriting is really good on this so i think for that reason it's a really great album so i don't want to go into too much detail but because i reviewed it so i'm going to put the full review right here i'm going to stick that right here you can watch that one next and then i will go into more details about all the songs track by track but in the meantime um thanks for watching please like this video it helps me with the youtube algorithm and i will uh, see you in the next one